Now, these aren't numbers necessarily to memorize, but you'll probably have them memorized after you keep using them and using them. But big H in that NH formula is the molar heat. So it's not just written in joules, that would just be heat. The little h would be joules, which is in heat, but big H is joules or kilojoules per mole. This number here represents the amount of heat that needs to be absorbed when ice turns to liquid. One mole of it at zero degrees Celsius. 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Now to take that one mole, or 18.02 grams of, of water, because that's one mole, right? That's the molar mass. 40.65 kilojoules per mole in order to vaporize that mole of water. Now, if you're going the other way, and you're actually taking the water as a gas and turning it into liquid, then the molar heat of condensation is negative. Because when gas turns to liquid, water is released. And just remember it because this way, because if it goes from liquid to a gas, you know you have to add heat. So that would be endothermic. But if the water is going from gas to liquid, it releases heat, so that's exothermic, right? So we put a negative for exothermic. Same if the water is going from liquid to solid, we put a negative in front. Oh, and by the way, you know that the heat capacity of water is 4.19, and that's in joules per gram degrees Celsius. But the heat capacity of water as a vapor is 2.02 .02 joules per gram degrees Celsius, and for water as a solid, it's 2.00 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Different heat capacities, don't get tripped up, because questions are coming now, where you've got to actually keep those under control. By the way, it can also be very convenient to represent this number here with slightly different units. If you multiply the numerator and denominator by a thousand, then you can actually write There's a basic principle in order to calculate the answer to any of these questions that we'll be looking at, and that is to recognize that the amount of heat lost by something equals the amount of heat gained by something else. Now, we know that there's always heat that's lost in a reaction that we can't account for. Sure, okay, but we're not going to really consider that. Uh, we try to minimize the, the amount of error there, and I'll show you that in another calculation coming up too. But the point is, it's always Heat loss equals heat gain. That's the first thing you always write down on paper. It's the first thing I always do, and I've been doing this for 20 years. You'd think I'd, I wouldn't have to do this anymore, but I do, because it's a good example to you. Now look, heat loss equals heat gain. So in this case, what's losing the heat? Well, all right, there must be the environment. Something in the environment, we're not told, is actually giving heat to the water, which is actually undergoing vaporization. So it must be at around 100 degrees Celsius and ready to just take off as a vapor. So what's losing the heat? Well, the environment is losing that heat. Now what's gaining the heat? The, the system here is the water that's gaining the heat. And because it's undergoing a phase change, and a phase change only, we're told in the question, then we write NH. Now we must have information for all of this. Well, two of those things anyway. One of them is the unknown variable that we have to solve for. And if we're looking for what mass of ice, what thing here is going to be able to help us to get mass? N, which stands for the number of moles. So, N is number of moles, and when we find that, we can then get the mass. So, what we have is the heat, which is 20 kilojoules in this question, and we have a molar heat because it's water vaporizing, that's 40.65. So we rearrange what we do, of course, to solve for N is divide each side by big H. And so the formula actually then becomes, oh, you almost caught a chem guy. The chem guy, he's, he's, he understands that when you manipulate this formula, you get H over big H, and then you plug in the numbers, 20 divided by 40.65. Now. I haven't kept significant digits yet. There's three here, and there's four here. There's lots in this number right now, and that's the moles of the water. But we don't want moles of water, we want the mass, right? And so therefore, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that zero decimal 49200 moles, and that's of water, 
and we're going to multiply by, what's the ratio? There, for every 18.02 grams of water you have, that actually is one mole of water. And so moles of water cancels, you're left with the mass of water. And of course the mass of the water is that right there, 8.86 grams of water. Now, there were three significant digits in one of the numbers in our original question and four significant digits in the number that we used. Keep the least number of significant digits when you multiply or divide. And so that number right there and this number right here, when multiplied together, we're not going to keep five or four. We're going to go back to the original question that we've been actually working with and keep three significant digits, 8.86 grams. Woo, let's do another.